Good evening. This is Dr. Priya Dashni, Assistant Professor, Department of English, KCS Kasi Nada College. Today we are going to see the analysis of the poem Easter 1916, written by W. B. Yeats. It was written in the year 1960. It was published in the poetry collection called Michael Roberts and the Dancer in 1921. The poem celebrates the Easter rising in 1916. Easter 1916 refers to the Irish people rebellion against the Britishers and the British rule and how they got crushed by the British army. Ace thinks that it is a premature rising and he feels that the bravery and heroism is not fit for poetry but he feels their martyrdom should be celebrated through this poem easter 1960 let us go into the poem easter 1960 wb8 was born in the year 1865 in dublin his father was a lawyer and also a well known portrait painter he was educated in london and in dublin as a young man he was a part of fine d circle he was also active in societies which started the irish literary revival his first volume of poems appeared in the year 1887 associated with lady georgery he founded the irish theater in future it was named as abbey theater after 1910 eads wrote some dramas and also his poems turned into highly poetical static and also he was influenced by japanese no place he brought this nationalist movement in his poetry he was also appointed to the irish senate in the year 1922 he was one of the few writers whose greatest work were written after the nobel prize where he received the nobel prize for his dramas He wrote many volumes of poems few of those are the wild swans at cool in 1919 michael roberts and the dancer in 1921 the tower the winding star and other poems last poems and plays which he return in the year 1940 which was published in 1940 posthumously after his death he is one of the most influential writer of 20th century The poem Easter 1916 was written on September 25th 1916. The poem was included in the volume called Michael Roberts and the Dancer in the year 1921. This particular poem celebrates the rising of Easter 1916. Actually, the Irish people uh, rebelled against the British for independence. This uprising was crushed by British army. A group of Irish insurgents captured the General Post Office in Dublin, which is the capital of Ireland. After 7 days they surrendered. Actually when Britain was busy with the World War 1, the poem Easter 1916 is divided into four stanzas. let us go into the first stanza of the poem the beginning line the author gives the pen picture of the people in ireland before easter rebellion in 1916 here the author starts the poem i have met them at close of day he refers to the people who got involved in the revolution he says I have met them close of day mostly in the evening time the author used to meet them 
coming with vivid faces that is clear faces from counter which means counter of shops or desk among grey desk here means office grey refers to dull that is the evening time so the evening time he meets people who are coming out from shops as well as from their office 18th century houses people or people have this old thought of mind so he refers to their way of living as 18th century houses i have passed with nod of head whomsoever he come across they will just lower their head a nod of head to greet the author he says they used to greet him with 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 good morning good afternoon and good evening whenever they meet the author or polite meaningless word so he says that the formal word like good morning or good day doesn't have any meaning but they are very polite and respectful so they greet the author or have lingered wild and said polite meaningless word so in a slow manner while leaving they used to say this polite words and thought before i had done of a mocking tale or a gib so he says in the evening time like normal people they used to sit and and have share the mocking tales the funny stories that would provoke or make fun of somebody or gib gib means mocking remark which would wound or provoke someone to please a companion to have a good time with their friend around the fire at the club so the club here means art club in london which yates was the founder of this club so they were normal people who were leading normal life so that is what the author trying to say in this through these lines and he says that the evening time like every uh, one in other cities they too used to go to some clubs and meet their friends and have sit around the fire at the club and they used to mock laugh and have a, a good time among them but certainly that they and i but lived where motley is own so he says yes certainly that they that the people who got involved in this revolution and i me the author that i refers to them author but lived a mortally is own mortally is a dress which is worn by um, gestures that means fools a colorful dress so they used to wear a colorful dress and they used to live a normal life so the author here means they are normal people who lived a normal life all changed changed utterly but one day everything changed a terrible beauty was born so look at here the author used here an oxymoron the end of the first stanza terrible beauty he says the whole poem is focused on this particular single phrase so he says terrible here suggests terror destruction something thrilling suspense but beauty is a total contradictory image to this so oh, the two images are mixed and reconciled and he says that a terrible beauty is born that is a new beauty is born the second stanza the author talks about the heroes of easter 1916 that woman days were spent that woman refers to countess mackage she is a beautiful lady countess who took part in the rebellion the death sentence was pronounced on her but later it was uh, revoked and she got the life sentence later she got released so here the author starts the stanza like this that woman was spent in ignorant goodwill so she lived a innocent life her night in argument until her voice grew shrill so here the author talks about in the night in the evening time she used to combine with her friends and go out and talk what 
voice more sweet than hers the author says her voice was so sweet when she was young and beautiful she wrote to harris actually harris refers to the packs of hounds which who accompany accompanies the huntsmen chasing hares yes, when she was young she used to wrote to harris then he refers to this man this man refers to patrick pierce who is a founder of san eden school in dublin and he was also the president of provincial government and this is this guy also surrendered in the post office so he says this man had kept a school so this man was running a school and rode a winged horse so he likes to ride on fast shift horses and then he talks about this other his helper and friend then this other his helper refers to a man called thomas magdo who is a poet dramatist and a critic a friend was coming into force which means he was just beginning he was just recognized as a poet his potential is not known to the world he might have won fame in the end so sensitive his nature seemed so daring and sweet his thought so he says this man was just recognized as a poet and a critic and a dramatist but unfortunately his uh, uh, he has never achieved that fame because his life have come to an abrupt end the other man i had dreamed a drunken vain glorious loud so at last he refers to a man called john mcbride who is a husband of maud gon whom aids loud sincerely madam gon married this man john mcbride so he refers to that man as a drunken who is a drunkard vain glorious loud which means a vain useless fellow and also awkward in nature he had gone most bitter wrong because he has married a beautiful and a wonderful lady madam gone but after 2 years of their marriage he divorced her. that's what he refers here he had done most bitter wrong to some who near to my heart so this guy has done all wrong to the lady whom i loved so dearly that's what he means in this line yet i number him in the song though he had done all wrong who's a useless guy but still i am including him in my song he too has resigned his part he too has done something in the casual comedy that, that is the comedy of ordinary life which he lived at a superficial level he too had been changed in his turn that means he refers he, the rebellion changed this fool into a great hero that's what he says and transformed utterly and once again he ends with the same line a terrible beauty is born in the third stanza it feels that these men they sacrifice their lives for the mere idea actually they were not that much interested in enjoying their lives they were like an unfeeling stone in the midst of the stream everything around them has changed he refers to hordes the riders the birds the shadow the clouds everything have changed changing them every minute but these people were not and they remain unchanged like a stone and they were unaffected by the pressures of life pleasures of life that is what he is in the final stanza it starts the stanza like this too long a sacrifice can make a stone of the heart 
Here the author says that a prolonged sacrifice can harden their heart. Oh, when may it suffice? Which means maybe the sacrifice be sufficient. The this is heaven's part. A part to murmur name upon name. So he says, the long bloody journey towards end. It is not our part. It is in the hands of heaven. Only we should murmur name upon name. It is our duty to remember their sacrifice of these patriarchs one by one. As a mother names a child when sleep at last has come. So they are remembering their names one by one like a mother who names a child even after its death. Until she lives, until her limbs become tired, until she grows old, until, until she dies. She keep on saying the child's name like the same way. They too will be remembering the name of the people who are sacrificed to their life for their country. What is, what is it but nightfall? No, no, not but death. So here he says, this act is like a nightfall, but death at its end. They did not achieve their aim. What is needless after all? For England may keep, for all is done and said. So he says that, was it needless death after all? He is questioning. Do you think their sacrifice is needed or this is a needless death? So he says that for England may keep faith because there is no need for their death for England. They might have kept their promise that is freeing Ireland after the First World War. Because in 1913 the British government passed a bill called Home Rule in which Ireland was uh, at the time they were staying at the outbreak of the First World War. Maybe after the First World War, England itself would have given freedom to Ireland. So it is a needless death for all that is done and said. So already they have sacrificed their life. We know their dream. Enough to know thy dreamed they are dead. So we know the dream of the heroes. They died for their dream, he says. What if excess of love bewildered them till they died? So they had a excess love for their country. So that is why they were bewildered by their excess love for this country and they sacrificed their life for passion. So the, their country is their passion. So they have sacrificed their life, he says. I write it, uh, I write it out in a verse. MacDow and MacBride, Connolly, Pierce. Now in time to be. So he says that. So the poet writes the poem to sacrifice to uh, to the person who have sacrificed their lives. He dedicates this poem to MacDow, MacBride, Connolly, Pierce and others who have sacrificed their lives. Whenever green is on or change utterly, a terrible beauty is born. So this green color is the Irish national color. So the author says here, they had, they all stand transferred now. They have sacrificed their life. Their excess love for their country blinded them. So whenever this green, the Irish color is worn by those people, the names of those patriots will be always remembered with respect by the people. They are not ordinary men, he says, or changed, changed utterly. So he says they are not ordinary men. They are changed completely. Once again he ends the poem with the same line. A terrible beauty is born. So with these lines that is the rebellion. The glorious the, the act 
the revolution is glorious but it is terrible so he ends the poem a terrible beauty is born william butler yeats was deeply moved by the heroism and the martyrdom of the insurgents the sacrifice of these great men will be acknowledged with warmth and their terrible beauty will be remembered though he have very little sympathy for them those insurgents is a symbol of heroic martyrdom to aids aids succeeded in creating a truly poetical myth out of contemporary politics he is one of the great poets of 20th century thank you for your patient listening